Hello everyone. I'm Mike Levin from MikeLevinSEO.com and I'm here to tell you a little about what you'll find on this site. And of course, you're going to find a lot about SEO. It is my field and it is the practice of reaching your audience without paying for advertising. Some might think that's also social media. This is the beginning of the process. First people have never heard of you. Some intrepid searchers search and find you and then they share. And once it's shared, it starts to take on its life in social media. SEO provides that initial spark, that initial flame to become the torch to be passed from hand to hand. So that's how I view SEO. It's a fundamental, uh, almost as old as humanity itself, as is its corollary word of mouth. Um, other things you're going to find here. Of late, something that has been very, very popular is the Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi is a little hardware device that you can use to run all your code on and it's $35 and in many ways it's as legitimate of a server as $10,000 servers of 10 years ago and it's extremely liberating to do things on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, my particular interest is running it as a headless web server and as a place to launch Python scripts from for uh, site crawls and uh, site audits, all kinds of investigations, timed tasks. But people are using it for home automation, controlling robots, and it's just a great thing to be involved in. Very related to that is where the word Pi part of its name came from, and that is Python, the Python programming language. And I've been a programmer for most of my life in some capacity or another, but never a professional programmer. It's always been a means to an end rather than the end in itself. I've tried to take up the enterprise languages like .NET and Java and I've always backed off because I didn't need it that bad to make that kind of an investment of my soul. And it wasn't until Python that I found a language that I absolutely fell in love with and I can use almost as naturally as the spoken word. The language just sort of fades away and you start to think in a more pure form of automation and logic. And I advocate it. Um, there's other great languages out there. I'm not guiding you away from them, but this is such a large grab bag of things that if you were to only learn two languages, the JavaScript should be one of them because user interface design on the web and the web browser is the grand unified user interface these days. Can't get away from it, but the other language should be Python for many, many reasons that you'll be learning here over the months and years. So what else are you going to find here? There's two applications that I consider just must-haves and they let you, uh, well, text files. Everything you do in tech comes down to text files. And there's a particular editor that goes back in time uh, some 40 plus years and it's part of the uh, Unix standard, at least the predecessor one was, VI, the M stands for improved, and it's the heir apparent to this text editor that I can only describe as have, giving you nearly telepathic control over text. Um, and it's always there. Get good at it, and it'll serve you for the next you know, 20 or 30 years, while all other text editors go away, become unsupported, force you along these upgrade paths that are expensive and lock you into platforms. And another application, which is very much in the same category, not nearly as old as the Vim text editor, but which has rapidly become a must-have go-to application for many, many reasons, is Git. It's a distributed version control system for your code. And in addition to keeping your code safe, 
It actually embeds an edit by edit forever history of your entire project from your first line of code on every instance that you create. And the fact you can create new instances easily means it's also a method of deploying software. There's better deployment systems when you're dealing with thousands of computers you need to move code onto, but Git is sort of the fundamental uh, way tool, the tool that should be in your toolbox to let you do easy deployments and to keep your code safe. Um, and it's uh, probably never going away. It's the thing that is now maintaining the Linux kernel. Which leads us to our last topic, Linux. It's sort of the underlying theme of almost everything here, uh, with the possible exception of SEO, but I could make that argument too. It's the operating system that Python runs on, Git, Vim run on, and all these things run on other operating systems, but this is free and open source, runs on the Raspberry Pi, your applications will be so liberally licensed that you could instantiate thousands of instances of your applications and not pay anyone a dime for software licensing. So let's talk about SEO for a second. Why is my site inevitably, inevitably gonna, gonna become so popular? It's because of this Venn diagram. Linux has its circle. Vim has its circle as does Git. And you see what's happening here. The Raspberry Pi. And of course, SEO, as the site is named for. And this intersection right here, not that there's that many people there, it's probably about two people, but I guarantee you, I'm going to know every one of them over the coming months and years. Because as people search and combine the keywords that are associated with these different circles, there's fewer and fewer pages and sites that match that criteria, and I'll be in that very short list. But the same is true for any two or three circles. So I'm actually going to be able to fairly easily target topics that have a two or three circle overlap. That's called the long tail. It's still easy to bring in traffic when you're targeting a niche that's established by overlapping interests. It's much harder to target just Git. I don't know if I could bring in traffic on Git, and certainly not SEO with everyone trying to do that. The Pi I had some luck with by being one of the first unboxing videos with a, uh, that went over a million views in the past two years. Um, Linux, there's no way. Although I do have Linux, which lets you do many of the same things as the Raspberry Pi without even making that first $35 investment in hardware. You can double click a file on the desktop of your Mac or your Windows machine or even another Linux desktop and do many of these same Python oriented projects uh, without even having to install Python on your own computer. It just in, runs in this tiny little virtual box. So there you have it. Uh, my job now as an SEO is to take this incredible jumble of things and I need to organize that information. It's not only the discipline of the SEO to organize information, but that's the discipline of pretty much all of design. Uh, people who say this stuff is all, is all related, uh, math and science and music and anything that has information and things that appeal and touch human beings all comes back to this kind of uh, design, form, function, pragmatic, beauty. It's all the same thing. It's organizing information. So I will be dealing with things like hierarchy and navigation and how deep my site really goes but how much that is exposed through the navigation and how much of a controlled messaging and experience I'm going to try and put all the users through 
while there's this vast iceberg of information underneath uh, for searchers who are interested in much more particular things. And that becomes the mouth of the funnel of the, of the process that I showed you yesterday to get as many people in, get them talking about me through social media, build my tribe, start having a relationship with the ones who are candidates for my SEO services, and then come out with actual customers, ongoing, repeating customers, because the mission of any company or organization is to get or keep customers. Thanks for joining me, and I hope to talk to you again soon, and please don't forget to subscribe.